Some have seen with their own eyes. Thousands have heard the sounds, even if they did not know the source. But few understand the complete story about how visionary leaders saved an iconic instrument of Oklahoma history, and how the WKY Kilgan Theater Organ was rescued, revived, and ultimately saved from silence. In the 1870s, George Kilgan and Son of St. Louis, Missouri was known as the main supplier of church organs in the Midwest United States. In 1926, Kilgan turned to production of theater organs. A theater organ is derived from the uh, theater, the uh, classical organ or the concert organ. A fellow by the name of Robert Hope Jones from England said, we can, we can take that technology of the, th of the cathedral organ and make it sound like an orchestra. We'll, take, we'll adapt the pipes to sound like a, a violin or a saxophone or a clarinet. We'll add some percussions like a xylophone and drums. We'll even add things that go with the silent movies like a siren and a car horn and bells and whistles, which is where that expression comes from. When silent movies came out, the producers requested that the theaters provide an, an orchestra to accompany it. And that was very expensive for small theaters. And so the rationale for having a theater organ was to reduce the cost of, a, of an orchestra. And in fact, the early theater organs were called a unit orchestra, and they were played along with silent movies. One of Kilgan and Sons theater organs, known as a one-person substitute for a full orchestra, was installed in Oklahoma City's WKY radio station in 1936. Radio stations needed an orchestra-like instrument as well. Well, in the 1930s, WKY was a profit-motivated business, and they needed advertising revenue, which required a lot of programming. So typically, you'd have 30-minute, sometimes 15-minute shows throughout the day, and almost every show had music, whether it was a dramatic reading or it was just a musical program. The Kilgan organ was one of those very versatile machines that could provide this background music for a wide variety of programming throughout the day. The sounds of the Kilgan organ became a staple in the lives of many Oklahomans, becoming the soundtrack to children's programming, radio productions, and commercials. One of the most recognizable shows for which the Kilgan organ was used was a nightly hour of programming featuring the musical talent of Chicago organist Ken Wright. Wright's music graced the airways of WKY for 15 years. The Kilgan gave the producers such a range of possibilities, whether it was a sound effect, a musical score, something to just go along with a light melody with the singer, and it really provided that versatility to the production side of making money at WKY Radio. As technology advanced and WKY shifted its focus to television, the role for the Kilgan organ was diminished. When WKY moved its studios away from downtown Oklahoma City in 1951, there was no place for the Kilgan to follow. The organ was sold and installed at the Municipal Auditorium, later renamed the Civic Center. It was used sparingly until 1998, when the center was set to undergo a redesign that would not include a place for the Kilgan. In 1998, while I was right in the middle of planning a new history center, I'd been given some planning money to look ahead what we could do to collect, preserve, and share history. And I got a call one day from Greg Robertson, a friend of mine who had worked for us, a sound engineer who was also friends with Guy Fraser Harrison, had recorded at the Civic Center, and was a good friend of Garmin Kimmel. In 1998, I discovered that they were not going to retain, they were going to remodel the music hall and not retain the organ. And uh, so I went to the mayor and city council and asked them to save it and we'd find it a home. They said, find it a home. I called Dr. Bob. And he said, Bob, did you know they're, they're going to get rid of the Kilgan organ? They're going to sell it. I said, no. He said, we need to do something about it. I joined the team at that time trying to do something about saving that very important historical artifact from Oklahoma history. And so I called Ed Gaylord at the old pub code to ask him to put an article in the newspaper about it, which he did, front page actually too. And, uh, and uh, I went to the city council 
and told them about it and had them come over and actually hear it. And Ron Norks had come to the next meeting and the city council agreed to have it removed and stored until it got a home. And I called Dr. Bob and said, they're not gonna do this. You're building a new history center. What about putting it here? And he came down and talked to the city council. They gave it to him. There had been some discussion about it going to uh, someplace else, but Dr. Bob gave it a home here and the rest is history. <laughs> I made my pitch. I said, I would like to have this to use it in the history center that we're just now planning. We will have uh, pipe chambers that we will put into the building. We will use the artifact in an exhibit, pull it out, perhaps use it. Didn't know for sure. I said, we want it. They said, well, can you pay to have it disassembled? No, don't have any money. Can you pay to have it stored? No, don't have any space. Even with all of that, they agreed that it had to stay in Oklahoma City and unanimously the council voted to leave it in Oklahoma to be used in the eventual Oklahoma History Center, even when it was only a dream. That dream of making the Kilgan organ a viable part of the Oklahoma History Center would face major obstacles. The most important and most difficult challenge in saving this once proud centerpiece of WKY programming was the unplayable and deteriorated state of the organ. The city paid to have the Kilgan organ disassembled and stored and uh, it was being stored in the boxes. They hired a person to come in and take it apart and, and to store it. I had several consultants come into town to look at it, uh, to give us estimates on what it would cost to reconstruct it. We knew it would be expensive. Uh, and we put together a plan and we found out a lot of the pieces were missing. A lot of the pipes were no longer there. Some were damaged beyond repair. All of the leathers needed to be replaced. The felt, it just went on and on. It was gonna be a very complicated project but we did not let that deter us. We decided we want this to be part of the History Center. We carved space out of the two main galleries on the first floor of the History Center to create the chambers for the pipes. Uh, we did the engineering to put the, uh, the blowers in the basement with piped up to uh, the two chambers. And so we proceeded as if we were gonna make this happen. And we hired a consultant to fix it. Uh, at the end of the day though, just before opening the History Center in 2005, we found out it would not play. So we put it on hold and says, we need to wait for a better day. We had to open anyway. And so for almost seven years, the Kilgans sat there, uh, un uncompleted, needing those pipes, needing a real restoration, needing to find a way to use adaptive reuse to bring it up to code to where it would be sustainable and something we could use for programming. Well, fortunately, our, our first angel who said they wanted to help was Garmin Kimmel. He said that he had such fond memories of that. He loved the engineering part of the Kilgan organ, the way it worked, using air pressure and valves. That was his business. And he actually said, I will donate the money for the original restoration. Did not work. I had explained to Mr. Kimmel, sorry, sir, we failed. He says, carry on, we'll find another way to do it. We'll go seven years into the future, after seven years of no solution, uh, Garmin's son-in-law, Dusty Miller, comes in to see me, I've never met him. Uh, we meet, he says, I wanna help bring the Kilgan to life. Fortunately for us, not only did he say he would help with raising the money, but he knew about a new American Organ Institute at the University of Oklahoma, David Boren had just created, with a specialist who knew how to do projects like this, looking for projects where they could prove to the community it was a worthwhile public service. At the suggestion of Dusty Miller, the organ's repair was entrusted to the American Organ Institute at the University of Oklahoma. Well, it was, it needed a lot of TLC. Uh, the pipe work was uh, collapsing, had a lot of dents. The chest needed full re-leathering and some repair work. And the structure needed to be redone that supports the chests and the percussions. In addition, the console needed new uh, parts such as keyboards and stop tablets and uh, reconditioning of the finish. Uh, there were about a dozen students or so over about a year and a half that, uh, that helped with the project. Then we had our um, AOI staff, the American Organ Institute staff. There were, uh, there were about six of us that worked on the project. And then over the course of that project, we had folks that came in and assisted with various 
parts. So we had folks that helped out with the project that came in from Ohio, Massachusetts, Indiana, New York, California, just to name a few. The initial steps were designing the layout in the chambers and the stop layout in the console, the, um, the little tablets and uh, how exactly the pipes that are in the chambers play from the instrument. And from there, we just, we went through the process of, for the console, de designing the relay, getting that uh, wired and built. And then in the chambers, doing the woodworking and building the structure, re-leathering the chest, repairing the pipes and getting that all uh, put together um, in the shop and then disassembling and reassembling and final testing at the History Center. After such a long, difficult journey, the WKY Kilgan organ has found its home. Fully rebuilt and operational, it is not just a static display, but a living, breathing embodiment of Oklahoma history that can be seen and heard by all. This accomplishment is celebrated in quarterly performances hosted by the Oklahoma History Center, featuring top artists from around the country. Part of the intent for the Kilgan performances and programs is to use it as a way of introducing people that don't know and reintroducing people that have a love of the instrument and all its capabilities. Almost every artist that we've had as part of their program has d included a discussion of how the organ works. What does it do? What are the sounds? What are the special effects? Because the range is extraordinary. And that's part of the fun for the audience, is to see it in the context not only of a musical piece, but in the context of support for a silent film and other things and how the music can make the silent films come alive and add a depth of performance and of emotion to it that just the film itself, while wonderful, when you add the music to it and the special effects, helps it come alive. The intention within the History Center from a program perspective is always to try to achieve the highest standards of excellence that we have not only with the musical instrument itself, but with respect to the artists that have come in to share their talents with the audience and build on it so that we never accept standing still. We always try to do better for the next program, the next performance, and to try to build on that so it's always fresh, it's always new, and it gives people a chance to experience the range of what this extraordinary instrument is capable of, of providing. It's become a part of our identity as a historical society, as a history center. That's one of the things that we hoped would happen, and I think has, is that people have come to expect that level of excellence in the performances and the programs that we offer through the organ. And one of the things that we have learned about the organ through the people that are, are knowledgeable about the workings of organs is that the instrument wants to be played. It wants to be shared, it wants to be kept in tune, it wants to be action-based and moving. Uh, and by doing that, not only does it create an opportunity for enjoyment, but it creates an opportunity to extend its life. Because we keep the environmental standards stable, we keep everything about it as stable as we can, thereby extending and preserving the instrument for future generations to come. And that's part of what we do. We preserve what we have for the future generations to come. It's, a, it's been so long. It seems like too long almost in between times. I haven't missed one yet. I've loved every single one of them. I think some of my favorites though are the ones with the films, where the, where the film is choreographed to the, uh, to the organ. Everyone is different. Everyone is fabulous. We've never been disappointed. We love to come to the History Center. I attended a concert in WKY studio when, 73 years ago. And when the Kildren was reestablished in a playable form, we took the opportunity and we have ever since. I have uh, been to many of the performances and I have told all my friends everywhere. Matter of fact, we brought two people tonight that just moved to Oklahoma City so they could see the thing. And uh, they were absolutely impressed and wanted to come back. Even though it's an old instrument, it's been wonderfully restored. 
and we have the opportunity to listen to it and it sounds as good as it ever did and it's just fun to listen to. Yes, this is an instrument that came into being in the 1930s, but it's still relevant. It still has a place. And by explaining the history of it and its workings and of bringing the music forward, again, we create another bridge between the past and the present and the performances that it's capable of delivering and the enjoyment that it's still capable of sharing with people. And so with Dusty as the intermediary, helping to raise the money to get this done, uh, we were able to get the American Organ Institute. They said, yes, we will work on it. They took all the pieces to Norm and worked on it for several years. And then once we said, yes, we can install it, Dusty stepped back up and said, we need to endow it to make sure we can keep this thing operating, that we will have a subsidy for entertainment, actually using this in the future so it's not just a static exhibit. And this thing will live well beyond our lives. It will remain an important part of Oklahoma history, going back to WKY Radio, Civic Center, orchestral music, the entire story of theatrical organs and, and movie theaters, and then how we were to, able to restore it, use it for programming here, and to open a window into our past that we can use music and this artifact to recreate a time and place and this emotional impact to history and to really promote a better understanding of Oklahoma and where we've been and where we're going. And so this effort was one of those things that was meant to be. There were so many reasons we should not have the Kilgan today, but we do. How do you explain it? A lot of hard work, and a lot of dedication, a lot of people stepping up to say, I will help. But then there's probably something else. It was meant to be that we would have the Kilgan organ and it is safe forever. It's a very important part of Oklahoma history. It, uh, it was used here and thousands and thousands of people heard it live every night on, on the radio. And it was the only theater organ in Oklahoma City and it needed a home. It needed to be saved. I don't think it's a stretch to say that millions of Oklahomans have heard it uh, through the time from 1935 until 1999 when it was removed from the Civic Center. It has survived all those years, over 80 years now. Many of, the, of, their, of the Kilgan organs, and Kilgan only built a few theater organs, have not survived till today. So that this was a relatively rare piece of Oklahoma's history to begin with, and is even more rare today. The WKY Kilgan Theater Organ. It was an undeniable tool that expedited the historic transition of sounds from radio and silent movies to modern day television. It is a source of pride for all Oklahomans who attend the quarterly programs showcasing the vibrant sounds of an instrument that could have easily been discarded as unworthy to save. It will be a constant reminder of the value of preserving our historic roots, giving future generations a brief glimpse into a day they never knew, but can appreciate the efforts of those who made it all possible.